Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. It's not a secret that the Definitive Edition AI is significantly stronger than the one on HD. In this video, I'll be chatting with the main creator of the AI and the one who's been updating it with each monthly patch. Some of you may have seen the last interview I did with Promi, where we discussed some of the basics of how the AI interprets the game and makes decisions. This time, the main focus is going to be on the more recent changes and complex behaviors, what he's currently working toward with the AI in its future direction, as well as how realistic machine learning could be for Age of Empires 2. It was a really interesting discussion, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's check it out. Hey Promi, thanks for joining me. We chatted before about the HD AI, but obviously a lot has changed since then. That must have been, I'm thinking, over a year ago now. Yeah, it was a long, long time ago. Yeah, well, it's great to have you on again. And just to start things off, do you mind letting people know what it is that you do at Forgotten Empire Studio? Absolutely. So I am the AI lead at Forgotten Empires. I'm responsible for the AI script that everyone is hopefully enjoying to play against and with in single player as well as multiplayer. And I'm also helping out on production as associate producer. That's awesome. One thing I think Forgotten Empires and Age of Empires 2 by extension really has going for it is how many people like you are contributors to the community First as a passion project, and now how that's led to more official roles. It seems like there's a lot of effort to listen to feedback from the player base as well, even with something like the map pool voting that was just introduced. Yeah, I, I really hope so. And I think we're absolutely like moving into a good direction as well. And um, so yeah, pretty excited about that. Yeah, so just to start off and talk a little bit about the AI here, I'm sure you're sick of answering this, but it has to be asked every time because the question is always floating around. Does the extreme AI cheat? Oh yes, I remember hearing this question a lot. It does not actually cheat. Um, there are some things which the AI does which are done in a slightly cheating way, but only to help it get information about the game state. So there's something, for example, where the AI would then check how much military the enemy player has. That is actually something that would be information accessible to the AI script. So it could figure out, oh, my enemy has 40 units, but it will not know which ones those are. So it cannot counter those. And that is just something to help decide whether it should attack or what the situation in the game is like, just to help it be less of a potato in certain situations. <laughs> Good way to put that. So uh, there's something that I've kind of noticed that I don't know if this ties in with that, but I have noticed sometimes I'll play against it and then commenters will say, oh, that's weird. Normally it's way more aggressive against me. Is that possible that because I play different than those people, the AI is responding to me differently than it would to them? That is definitely a possibility. Um, sometimes the AI also just selects a different strategy or even just a different mindset, so to speak, um, in the mid to late game. Uh, the AI is definitely able to change its strategy in the middle of the game as well. And there's different factors which go into this. And for some of these, even a small random factor. So there's definitely a higher replayability, I would say, by having the AI do different um, behaviors, display them in different uh, games, and um, so not being the same every time you play. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that complexity in the different decisions that it does. And actually, I've noticed a big difference between HD and where it is now. So talking about Definitive Edition specifically, what would you say you were hoping to change or update about the AI? Oh, yeah. So there were a lot of things which um, the HD Edition could not do, which the the EAI can now do. So the main topic is just making the AI a little bit more human-like. And there are still areas where we can uh, improve this behavior, of course. But um, the HD AI was a lot more simple in its decision-making. It um, was not even able to place markets in good trading locations, for example. And also, it could not control its units in groups well, which is still something in progress for the DEAI, but it is there partially already. And just these kinds of things um, are just something that is possible on DE now, and uh, we definitely want to make it as human-like as possible. Okay, yeah, that's interesting to hear. So that, that human aspect, I've noticed that with trying to make it do different build orders and stuff as well, like the Fast Imperial that you recently put out. Oh yeah, the Fast Imperial is definitely a cool one. It's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, it is not um, the most strong version of it yet that it can be, but that is still something that uh, will be iterated upon in the future and will be made into a more effective version of its current self. Um, besides that, indeed, there's also another good strategy now that you talk about it, um, the Dark Age Rush. Mm -hmm. And the AI is actually able, on the extreme difficulty level, 
to pull off a rush in the Dark Age with militias, which is pretty cool with some uh, fancy micro on gatherers on resource drop sites. Speaking of um, lumber camps and mining camps here. And uh, that is something else which is just super cool, in my opinion, uh, just to see DEI pull this off, uh, which the HDEI is not able to do. Yeah, very cool. So uh, it's funny how far it's come from Age of Conquerors AI, which you sort of inherited. So at this point, what percentage would you say the AI is original? And what percent have you written up to this point? Original meaning like Age of Conquerors way back in the day. All right. So this is interesting because now for the um, new AI, I would say 95% of uh, the AI are written by myself. Um, the AI is mainly related to my own uh, older AI known as Promi. And um, some part of the new AI is merged into it from the HD edition AI, which I worked on together with another person called Archon in the community. And um, so this is basically my baby at this point and um, makes it much easier for me as well to work on it because all the changes are from me and I know exactly what is where and makes it a lot easier for me to work on it. Oh, for sure. How do you feel about the unauthorized versions of Parami and some other well-known AIs like Barbarian that people have made to Definitive Edition? Because I'm sure you know it's floating out there. Oh yeah, that's definitely a good question because um, there's a lot of controversy about this in the AI scripting community as well. Uh, for me personally, I don't really matter as much. Um, I mean, most of Promi uh, is in some way, shape or form included in the DE AI already. Um, so it's not really a big change for me. Although when I think about Barbarian, for example, the creator of it, the Max, a professional player as well, he clearly stated on the AI scripting forums that he does not want anyone else to re-upload his AI and that he is still working on a definitive edition uh, version of his AI. So at this point, uh, any upload of Barbarian on DE is unfortunately unauthorized and um, often also happened with modifications, which is not in the intent of the Max. Uh, in the future, though, people will be able to enjoy the official version. So are, are they able to play properly on Definitive Edition or are they weaker versions because it's not user patch? Yeah, indeed. They will absolutely be weaker. There have been several balance changes, for example, which the AIs will not be able to play with then if they were not adapted to it properly. Hmm. Uh, for example, we have the supplies technology now. Uh, we, we have lots of other things. Of course, also new civilizations. Yeah. And um, on top of that, we have an extreme difficulty level which did not even exist before. It just doesn't work properly. And then there's also uh, on DE uh, no hard-coded cheats anymore, which still exist on the CD version, which was Barbarian's target. And um, so Barbarian would actually counteract those cheats. And on DE, this would just make it start with less resources and hardest difficulty level. So basically, yeah, this really needs the scripter to do it himself or herself and just update the EI officially. So besides the greater maximum difficulty, like you mentioned, the extreme difficulty, uh, I noticed that Definitive Edition, there also seems to be less of a jump between difficulty levels. Like I'm thinking moderate AI especially used to be a big jump in HD, whereas the difficulty curve seems smoother to me now. Was that an intentional change or that just happened because of the merging with the Promi AI? Oh yeah, that was definitely an int intentional change. That's something that I looked out for, especially after collecting all the feedback on the HD Edition AI, where I also saw lots of uh, people say that and that yeah, two standard AIs were a good training partner, moderate AI would already be a little bit too aggressive. Hmm. And um, so that is something that we intentionally tackled here. Interesting. Could you give a few concrete examples of behaviors that are affected by difficulty level? Like is the AI just slower and making decisions or is it making different sorts of decisions altogether? Absolutely. Um, so maybe let's start this off by talking about the HD AI. Um, that one mainly handicapped itself by training less villagers on low difficulty levels. Um, there were also some small other factors, but uh, that was the main part of the difficulty scaling back then. Uh, for the, the EAI that is much more advanced, we are able to handicap the AI in all kinds of ways now. Um, it includes uh, the amount of uh, civilian population and military population that the AI is able to uh, produce, but also certain researchers uh, are not being researched on low difficulty levels. Uh, all kinds of fancy specific uh, unit micro is not being done on low difficulty levels. 
even the automatic um, hit and run that you probably still remember from the CD AI is toned down massively on low difficulty levels. And there's a big change. And for the extreme difficulty level, um, that's the only one that contains all of the fancy unit micro. Yeah, I'd actually be interested in talking about that for a minute because I've seen lots of these different actions like pushing deer and sheep scouting. And recently, I even feel like I've been seeing it trying to quick wall. Oh, yeah. So it is attempting to quick wall when it sees an enemy Dark Age rush coming. And uh, currently, it does that around the uh, gold gatherers. So it will try to do a quick wall from the sides of the mining camp to the gold mines just to not let the uh, enemy militias in. It's definitely still a little bit in progress, but it is working, and it's just so cool to see. Yeah, I'm curious, were those things possible before, or is it that the limitations on what you were able to do have somehow changed? Because I remember last time you said that without user patch, you couldn't have individual units selected or given tasks. Yeah. But it seems like that's possible now. Is, did something change there? Exactly. Exactly what you said here. Uh, you were not able to select and task specific objects. So now you're able to select a specific building or a unit, especially, of course, and task those in a certain direction or give them a certain um, object to target. And uh, that just makes it possible to do all kinds of things for the Dark Age rush, for example, with militias. Um, that is, of course, only possible uh, with, with these um, uh, yeah, new uh, possibilities where you can task the units yourself, because otherwise the hard-coded uh, AI attacking would just send them into the enemy town center. But now you're able to do all kinds of possible things that you can think of. And the uh, quick walling here as well, that is all handled by the AI script itself to detect every single tile which it wants to place um, the wall, wall um, tile on. And um, yeah, that's all new. Also the deer hunting, the deer luring with the scout, that's of course also only possible um, with this set of actions. And uh, there's many more possibilities uh, in the future uh, as well. So that's very exciting. Yeah, are there any specific behaviors that you're thinking about or working on? You're still trying to get the AI to do? Oh yeah, so I still have a variety of things which I want to get to at some point. Uh, and I am mainly thinking about group more group micro than already exists. For example, for the uh, Archer uh, Feudal Age Rush, that would be really nice to get them moving as a group to the enemy target. Um, which would probably be lumber camp or mining camp and uh, focus down single villages would make it so much more effective than just uh, attacking several villagers at the same time, not killing any of them. Um, there's also some other things, walling, the quick walling, that can be expanded uh, to make it wall the entire base uh, more properly. This would be a big one, I think, as well in, in making it uh, play more human-like. And that's really the, ma the main point here, to get it to uh, be more human-like in the future. Of course, I also want it to be as strong as possible on the extreme uh, difficulty level. I still want it to be as fun as possible on every difficulty level. Um, but yeah, playing it more human-like is also a big part in here. So to flip that around for a sec, in my definitive edition review, I said that I wanted a machine learning AI, which is kind of the opposite of having a really human AI. And I got called out by a lot of people. A lot of viewers were saying I was being unreasonable. And I feel like that's kind of the other way is to make it unhuman and to try to make it figure out how to play the game itself. Is that possible or is there some reason that that's just never going to happen? Yeah, so that's an interesting one. Uh, machine learning, talking about that is always interesting. Um, I would be personally, just to face, face it off with this one here, I would be very interested in a machine learning AI for Age of Empires 2. But the... Facts are also that the engine does not currently support that. Mm. And um, in general, the resources necessary to do a machine learning AI uh, for DE on a level where it would be uh, competitive, the resources that that would take would be absolutely massive. Um, StarCraft 2, for example, um, is, is a popular uh, comparison that, that we can make here because it does have um, the Alpha Star AI. Uh, which is a machine learning AI. And um, there are some articles on the resources that that uh, took. Um, but then we even have to keep in mind that that was with maps, which always look the same. And only three civilizations, although of course they are vastly different uh, from each other compared to Age of Empires. And I think personally, the biggest reason not to do a machine learning AI uh, as a standard AI uh, for a game is because then you're just not able to make any small changes to it. 
Like you think, oh, this is almost perfect, but um, it would be nice if it would, could also do this or that. Uh, that would be pretty much impossible to add to the machine learning AI or to change the machine learning AI's behavior uh, on your own. And just designing an AI is, is making it so easy to fulfill requests from the community, which we're always looking at the feedback of, or just anything else that, that we have in mind that we want to do. Um, but if it would be possible to have a second AI, which is machine learning AI, of course, that would be awesome as well. But it's, it's just... Um, yeah, it's just not really possible on the unfortunately. Well, I'm sure Microsoft has an extra computer lying around somewhere, I would think. And, you know, you just set it up and <laughs> have the AI play against itself in the closet. And every six months, you go like, hey, guys, this is where it's at. And, you know, it's going to be super derpy that everybody gets that. I think that'd be pretty cool. But, you know, like I, like I said, I'm, I'm sure I'm asking way too much. But, yeah, it's, it's cool to even think about. And it's cool it's even, you know, in the public culture and public consciousness that this sort of thing is happening, at least in some games. Absolutely. It's a very interesting topic. And uh, it's also always interesting to see just how the AI would play differently. Uh, some things which humans may have overlooked in terms of strategy. Um, so it's definitely a very interesting concept, which will be uh, much more frequent um, in the future. I mean, machine learning is uh, getting bigger and bigger every day. Um, but yeah, for this uh, project here, Age of Empires 2, it will unfortunately not be a possibility unless we hear an update on that in 50 years about the computer <laughs> in the closet finally being able to play competitively. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I've seen you streaming quite a bit, or at least a few times lately. So is that a new thing that you're doing? Because that seems like a great way for people to ask an actual developer if they see you on Twitch and they can ask you questions. Oh yeah, so I have actually started streaming on Twitch now. Um, it was very fun because I was only doing it for a few people, which was already fun to me. Um, and then we got a big influx of new viewers from uh, Viperhost, thank you here at this point, <laughs> as well as uh, lots of questions um, going along with that. So I ended up doing an AMA there and uh, on future streams after that as well, I uh, was able to answer quite a lot of questions about the AI which is always fun to me. So if anyone's watching this here as well and thinking, hey, I had this other question I feel didn't get answered completely, then yeah, sure, just stop by on the stream and uh, I'll talk to you about it and give you my side of things. Yeah, it's such a great thing for the community to have developers that are interested in hearing feedback and changing things. It's an awesome work that you guys are doing. Thank you. That's all I got in terms of questions for this one. But you know, like you say, if people have more questions, they know where to find you. And I'll put the link to that down below. Again, it was awesome to get your insights on what you're working on. And it's amazing watching it change not only over the long run, but it also seems even month to month now. So just keep up the great work, man. And thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. So I learned quite a few interesting things there, as I always do when I chat with Promi. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>